So I struggle with this one a little bit, and let me illuminate those struggles for you. This equation, you don't need to know it, it's not in the data booklet, but I think it helps. The delta G on the left, when that's zero, you are at equilibrium. And therefore Q, the reaction quotient, turns into Kc, the equilibrium constant. And rearrange that to get delta G theta equals negative RT ln Kc. Now, rather confusingly, the equilibrium constant is K in the data booklet. Now, this is what confused me. The books say that delta G theta equals zero at equilibrium. But here's the problem. If you set that to zero, you can't really solve that equation. I'm going to get infinities and, and zeros myself. So you know what? Delta G is zero at equilibrium, but this is delta G theta. And that isn't zero at equilibrium. Ah, oh, OK. So I can solve it for that. So what are the tricks? Well, temperatures in Kelvin. The gas constant involves joules. And the change in Gibbs free energy involves kilojoules. So you need to keep your eye on that for a unit conversion, if necessary. So the position of equilibrium depends upon minimizing Gibbs free energy change and maximizing entropy. That seems to be as much as you need to know, and I trust the noose book on this. Oh, I spelt position wrong. I got the position of the S wrong. <laughs> there are graphs like this in some of the other books. I'm not convinced that you need to know these graphs for the IB. I think that's more than you need to know. I trust noose. OK, so the only KC value that you know is for the dissociation of water, and it's 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So what can we do with that then? Well, if I tell you that delta G theta for that reaction is 79.9 kilojoules per mole, can you work out the value of the gas constant? So rearranging for the gas constant R. All right, I'm going to convert delta G theta into joules because I know that R is measured with joules. Temperature, this is assumed to be standard conditions, so 298 Kelvin. And it comes out at 8.32. Let's just check the value in the almighty data booklet. 8.31, okay, so it works. That's not bad considering we were using one sig fig for Kw. Okay, let's try another one. Calculate the value of the concentration of ammonia at equilibrium given the following information. Well, I suppose we better plug and chug that into our equation. Delta G theta is negative RT long K. And I can get the equilibrium constant because I've got the equilibrium equation. Alrighty, I'm going to stick to joules. So I've multiplied my delta G by a thousand. Temperature in Kelvin. And solve for ln K and then K. So that gives me ln K of 13.37, but I really want K. So on your calculator, press inverse ln. And you get K is, well, I'm going to keep three sig figs because my question has two sig figs. I'm going to keep one extra and then round off at the end. All right then, so K is 63,800. And I'm going to write out the equation for the equilibrium constant. Put in the two numbers that I have and solve for the third number, which is the concentration of ammonia. So the concentration of ammonia ends up at being 3.6 moles per decimeters cubed. And that makes sense to me. KC is bigger than one, so there's probably going to be more ammonia than there is the other chemicals. 